Hi, I'm Eric Eakin with the Bay Village Historical Society. We're going to talk today about the Cahoon family, the Rose Hill Museum, Reuben Osborne House, and the Cahoon Memorial Cabin down below. Uh, Joseph Cahoon walked here with his family from Vermont, got here October 10th, 1810, had 110 acres on the lakefront, uh, and proceeded to build a little log cabin. They stayed in the cabin about eight years until they were able to build Rose Hill uh, in 1818. I'm standing outside the Reuben Osborne house. Reuben Osborne was the second settler to arrive in this area. Uh, he arrived just later in the day, uh, the same day the Cahoon families arrived in October of 1810. This house was built in 1814. It's the oldest frame structure between Cleveland and Lorraine. We're inside the Reuben Osborne house now and we use these panels to display a lot of the materials that we have here. Uh, these panels show the uh, Sam Shepard murder trial. There's still a lot of people come to look at that. Uh, and we have uh, pictures, old pictures from Bay Village. And uh, the Hagedorn family was prominent. They had a huge farm in Bay Village. Uh, the Huntington family, which is where Bay Arts is now. Uh, pictures of their estate. Move over here, you can see this is how we do family trees. Uh, this was uh, Reuben Osborne and his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and their descendants. Um, and then pictures from the, uh, the Osborne family. And the Cahoon family, their family tree, all uh, displayed so you can see. And then this is on the Lakeshore Electric and Urban, which was a train that ran through Bay Village. People like to see that history. These are all mostly inner urban pictures. There's a, lots of material here at the Bay Village Historical Society. We're open generally Sundays, 2 to 4.30. Come over and uh, take a look. These are all the Bay High yearbooks. Probably the most complete collection we have of uh, Bay High yearbooks dating back into the 1910s. So if you're looking for a high school yearbook, uh, they're at the Reuben Osborne House. When the Cahoons came here, there was nothing much here, just uh, Indians and very few white men. The city of Cleveland was downtown and was just a few buildings and maybe uh, less than a thousand people. They didn't have electricity, they didn't have running water, uh, they didn't have refrigerators, they didn't have Target, they didn't have McDonald's, they didn't have Pizza Hut. Uh, they were really living out in the wilderness. This was their refrigerator. It's called a smokehouse. They could take their beef, pork, or lamb, uh, butcher the animals, hang them inside here, build a fire to smoke the meat, which would preserve it, so they could come out periodically, take some off, bring it inside the kitchen and cook it. This is the Cahoon Memorial Cabin. When the Cahoons got here in 1810, it was in October, it was getting cold, so they built a cabin on the east side of the creek just north of where Lake Road is now. There were eight of them and they hunkered down for the winter. They used the floor of the wagon as the door of the cabin. In 1976, uh, Boy Scouts and other community leaders under the direction of John Brandt built this cabin as a memorial to the Cahoon family and in celebration of the bicentennial of the United States. It took them uh, a number of months to build it, actually a number of years to build it, where the Cahoons built their cabin in about under uh, two weeks. We'll go inside. Life was tough for the Cahoon family out in the wilderness. They didn't have electricity, or running water. Uh, they didn't have Nintendo. Here's what children played with around that time. Now we're inside the living room of the Cahoon family home, now known as Rose Hill. This would have been where they'd had their main fireplace, and there was another fireplace on the back of it that served another room. The, the house has been reconfigured to make it into a museum. It's not like it was when the Cahoons were here. Uh, there was another staircase that was very steep. We took that out. Things have been changed a little bit to turn it into a museum. Uh, they would have to keep a fire going here 24-7, pretty much all winter long, 
uh, to keep the house warm. You didn't go to the thermostat and turn the heat up. There's your furnace, there's your thermostat, and your firewood is stacked outside, and if you run out of firewood, you're in big trouble. You didn't go to Target to buy your clothes. You had to make your clothes. These are some of the tools for that. They would grow uh, reeds down by the river, combine it with wool from the sheep. They would spin it into yarn on these machines, weave it together to make a fabric called Lindsay Woolsey, and use that to make pants, shirts, blouses, aprons. You really only had one or two pair of clothes to your name. Uh, you never took baths. There was no hot water. You might take one or two baths a year. Uh, you wouldn't have leather shoes. You might mostly wear moccasins or uh, made from deer hide or pig hide, or you would wear wooden shoes, which were easily made. What you're looking at is a drawing of the Cahoon family compound. Uh, I would say about uh, late 1800s. On the north, near the mouth of the creek, was a fish house. They would catch fish, process it, and sell the fish meal. Further south along the creek, you'd find the old Lake Road Bridge, the foundation of which is still there. Then you'd see Rose Hill. Behind it, on the creek, was the sawmill with lumber laying outside. The people from around the area would bring their lumber to Mr. Cahoon to have it sewn into, sawn into lumber. Further south was another house. This house was the grist mill. They would use to grind grain with water power from the creek. And then this was the Cahoon family barn, now known as the community house. For many years, this building housed the Bay Village Library. The Cahoon sisters, the last three daughters to live here, left this building and all of this parkland of the city of Bay Village in about 1918. And a lot of these books you see in this room were their books because they were school teachers. This is the genealogical library housed inside the Rose Hill Museum. Genealogy is the study of family trees your grandmother, your grandfather, their grandmothers, their grandfathers, and so on up. They didn't have computers back in those days, so they would do it on paper and then publish the results in booklets. Here's the Cahoon family uh, genealogy, Osborne family genealogy, uh, different genealogy uh, from the families of the area. This bell is from the old Parkview High School. Stood for many years, now the middle school is there. How anxiously do you think the kids waited to hear this sound? What you're looking at here is the original kitchen from the Cahoon family house. They would have a pot of food going, generally stew. They would uh, eat a lot of vegetables, root vegetables, which were easy to store like potatoes, beets, carrots, onions. Uh, they would have meat occasionally, fish. The fish they would store in barrels packed in salt and bring out the fish as they needed added to a stew. And if you had a little bit left in your plate, you wouldn't throw it in the kitchen sink. It would go back in the pot for somebody else to enjoy. These are some of the tools on display at Rose Hill Museum. You didn't go to Home Depot and buy furniture or wood that was already cut to size. You'd have to make it yourself. And they'd use saws and planes to make their wood, to build their furniture and their barns, their sheds, their houses, their steps. They had to build everything. We're in the basement of the Rose Hill Museum, the Cahoon family homestead. This room was created in the 1980s to look like what a kitchen would have looked like had the Cahoons been here. Uh, Normally the kitchen was underneath the main structure of the house, but we had this open space so we turned it into like a second kitchen, a replica kitchen. Again, we have the big hearth that would have uh, held the, the uh, cooking utensils, the pots, the pans. That's a roasting oven down below. This tool was used to stuff sausage. Over here you'll see the Cahoon family loom 
This was used to weave clothing. This is called a quilting rack. You would sit here on a chair and piece together pieces of cloth like this to make a larger piece of cloth that you could use for a bedspread or draperies or uh, anything like that. We're inside what's called the Victorian Parlor in the Rose Hill Museum. This room was added on about 1910 and is decorated in the Victorian style. This black sofa is covered in horsehair fabric. This is a foot-powered organ. The artwork above the black sofa is made of human and animal hair woven together into flowers and florets and different designs. What do you think this is? That's right. It's a CD player from 1910. We're upstairs in the main bedroom of the Rose Hill Museum and this room is presented in the, how it would have been in the early 1800s. This is a rope bed. The bed is made with ropes woven together and then a mattress filled with corn husks. Think how comfortable that would be. Down below, this is a soapstone heater. You throw that in the fire to warm it up bring it up and put it next to you or underneath the bed. And that is your toilet. It was the youngest child's responsibility to empty all the toilets every morning. When the Cahoons built a large addition onto the back of Rose Hill in 1910, this room became the new master bedroom. It's decorated again in the early 1900 styles with a lot of the old clothing uh, on display. Uh, men didn't wear collared shirts, they'd have a shirt and one collar that they'd put with different shirts and you'd have a collar in a box or, or two. You'd have hats, men wear hats all the time. The, how, this room would have been lit with gas, natural gas. You see the gas lights on the walls. This is the children's bedroom in the addition to the Rose Hill Museum. Again, built about 1910. This shows what a typical children's bedroom would look like. No electronic toys, no electric trains, nothing with electricity. A lot of dolls, wooden toys, tops, simple objects for simple living. Thank you again for coming to the Rose Hill Museum in Bay Village, Ohio. We're very proud of this place. A lot of volunteers have spent countless time here to create one of the finest small museums in the state of Ohio and we're very lucky to have this here. We're also very thankful for the Cahoon family to have left this, this 110 acres of beautiful parkland uh, right on the shores of Lake Erie that we can enjoy for soccer and baseball and swimming and boating and it was they were forward thinking and we do appreciate that. Come to the see our Rose Hill Museum sometime when we're open generally on Sundays between 2 and 4.30. We also have a website, bayhistorical.com. You can be in touch with us that way. We can arrange private showings of the museum at your discretion as well. Thank you again and hope you enjoyed it.